We're in the tissue. To study tissues is called histology. And today we'll talk about four different kinds of basic tissues. Epithelium, connective, muscle, and neuron. So tissues are made of a lot of cells. And we talk about the cells, and we put a lot of cells and outside fluid together, that's in the tissue. So now we're in the tissue level. And when you put a lot of tissues together, we have organ. It will be our next topic. We'll talk about different organ and organ systems. The first one, epithelium. Epitheliums, uh, they have a lot of a vascular layers, so they don't have blood vessel like your skin. The epithelium, and you can peel your skin off. You won't bleed because they don't have blood vessel. And uh, also you have the glands, like your sweat glands, and they are part of the epithelium tissue. The characteristics, they have a lot of cells. Let's think about your skin. And a lot of cells, they protect you. And also these cells are tightly packed together. You don't want the bacteria to leak through the, the between cells and cells go into your body. So they are uh, tightly packed. They have the apical side and basolateral side. So the apical side is the one face outside. And they grow on the basement membrane. So that's the basolateral side. They don't have blood vessels, so you can peel your skin off. And the cells continuous continuously grow and replace. And the advantage is when you damage your skin, they will grow back. But when the cells continuously doing mitosis, uh, the disadvantage, they can, and they can have mutation. And that's why the skin cancer is, uh, is, is one of the cancer pretty common found in young adult. Functions, protections, permeability control, Sensation, like your skin, is a, it's a big sensory organ, so metal sensory sensation. And it secretes the sweat, secretes the oil. Gland is a specialized epithelium. And we can put them into the exocrine and endocrine. Exocrine is they secrete something through a duct. There is a duct to send the molecule out, like your sweat gland, that's the exocrine. And endocrine it directly secretes the chemical molecules into the blood. So the hormones is the endocrine. There is no duct. Epithelium tissues, they tightly packed together and they have to glue the cells together. So they have three kind of junctions. Tight junction, gap junction, and desmosome. These three junctions were first identified in epithelium tissue. And some of them, they gradually been found in other kind of tissue, like the, the gap junction and desmosome. We also find them in the cardiac uh, muscle, in the heart muscle. So we'll talk about them in other kind of tissue as well. And let's look at their function. So their main function is to glue the cell together, like the desmosome. Desmosome is, a, is the deep part. They're going to glue the cell together. The tight junction is in the surface. So they create no leakage. Bacteria could not go through the, the leakage to go into your body because of tight junction. And let's look at the gap junction. Gap junction is like the ions go through. They're like the ion channel. So the ions can go through it. And the gap junction lets the ions go from the cell 1 to cell 2 to cell 3. So they all work together. When we talk about the heart muscle, your heart electrical signal are able to go from the heart muscle 1 to 2 to 3, and the whole heart work like one cell. So when we record the electrical activity, the EKG, and their electrical signal can sum up together because the heart muscle work like one cell. And the reason is they have the gap junction to glue them together. On the apical side, they have microvilli or cilia. They look very similar. Uh, functionally, they are different. Microvilli, they don't move. So their function is to increase the surface area. Like your small intestines, you have a lot of microvilli. Cilia, they can move. So their function is to trap the dirty particle and send the dirty particles out. So in your airway, you actually have cilia. In your small intestines, you have microvilli. And 
and structure, they look very similar. This structure, CDR microvilli. And these cells grow on the cell basement membrane. So basement membrane is, is, is like the layer and the cells start to grow up. So they provide uh, resistance and stretch, uh, strength against distortion, this is their function. Epithelium cells renew, repair quickly. Think about your skin. You damage your skin and these cells are going to grow back. So they will recover. So they, they do mitosis all the time. That's the advantage. And this advantage is if the DNA got damaged and they can, they can produce the wrong cell. So skin cancer uh, is, the, is the one, one of the cancer found in young adult a lot. Epithelium cells can be put into different categories based on the number of layers. So if they have one layer, we call them simple. If they have more than one, we call them stratified. And the cell shape is the flat, we call the squamous. If it's a cube shape, we call the cuboidal. If it's long, we call the columnar. So we have the simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar, stratified squamous. We have six different kinds of uh, epithelium tissues. And in the stratified cuboidal, we talk about specific one, we call it the transi transitional. And in the stratified columnar, we'll talk about a specific one, a uh, special one, we call it pseudo stratified columnar. But we're we going to talk about six different kinds of epithelium tissues. Your job is to know where to find them what organs have what kind of epithelium tissue. So first one, simple squamous. The name tell you it's one layer and the cell is flat. So you put them in the, in the areas, diffusion, simple diffusions is the main mechanism for the molecule to move through. So like in the lung, in the lung, the oxygen need to go through the cells. So you put one layer and you put the thinnest one to help the gas molecule diffuse. So in your lung, in your air sac called alveoli, and you use simple squamous epithelium tissue. Same for your uh, capillary. Capillary is the area uh, the nutrients and gas molecule need to exchange. So the inner lining of the blood vessel. And capillary is the one with only the inner lining. So the capillary and also the lymphatic vessel, lymphatic capillary is a simple squamous epithelium. Next one, simple cuboidal. The name tells you one layer. It's a cube shape. Simple cuboidal, you find them a lot in the gland uh, or in the tube. So some glands and in the kidney, kidney you have a lot of tube. We'll talk about this in unit five, this tube called nephron. And they, they, they basically serve the same function as the kidney. So they filter your blood and they produce urine. So in the nephron, in the kidney, and they have those tubule structure and they have the simple cuboidal and the same for the glands. Next one, simple columnar. And it's one layer, its shape is long columnar structure. And usually on the surface they have microvilli. So that's in your small intestines. You have those simple columnar epithelium cells. Next one pseudo stratified columnar and it's called a pseudo stratified means it it looks like multiple layer but it's it's not and the reason is when we look at the nuclei they look like more than one layer so we think it's stratified but we had to zoom in and we found actually every cells touch the basement membrane so it's it's not true it's it's multiple layers it's actually still one layer so they're called the pseudo stratified and pseudo stratified ciliated columnar, these cells have cilia. Where do you find them? In your airway. So in your airway, you have a lot of pseudo stratified ciliated columnar cells. And they will trap the dirty particle and they will move so cilia can move. Usually they have a goblet cells. Goblet cells is a gland cells produce a mucus. So in your airway, those mucus can trap the dirty particle. And the cilia can move the dirty particle out. So your lung, 
uh, if you don't overwhelm this system, your lungs should be very clean, have those pink color. Uh, COVID-19, they damage those cells. So if they damage those cells, uh, and the one symptom is the patient cough, dry cough a lot. Next one, transitional. Transitional are multiple layer, and this number of layers can change from 10 to 8 to 6 when this organ expands. So in your body, you have the organ able to expand to take urine, and that's bladder. So in your renal system, you have those transitional epithelium. The last one, stratified squamous. So the name tells you multiple layer, it is flat. So you put them in the area you need to protect. You put multiple layers, like in your uh, oral cavity, in your uh, anus, vagina, these are the areas uh, have stratified squamous, multiple layers. And also your skin, of course, has multiple layers. And let's look at the glands. Glands are specialized epitheliums. And we have three different kinds of glands, merocrine, epocrine, and holocrine. The merocrine are the clean one. Merocrine secrete uh, what they're supposed to secrete, like saliva glands. They just produce saliva. Only saliva come out. So they are very clean glands. Let's look at the epocrine. Epocrine, they release what they're supposed to release, but part of the cells, epithelium cells, they got damaged and the breakdown fragments of the cells will come out. So like the milk gland, milk gland is an epocrine gland. So they not just produce milk, it's also part of the uh, cell fragment. Holocrine is a horrible one. Holocrine is they produce what they're supposed to produce and also the, the dead cells, they will come out as well. So holocrine is a, is a dirty one, like your sebaceous gland, we'll talk about this. Sebaceous gland is a gland in your skin, they produce oil. So they produce the cell and also the oil come out. And if you don't take a shower after you exercise, well, you're going to smell bad because there's the holocrine. Okay, so we finish the epithelium. The next one is connective tissue. Connective tissue, they have cell and matrix. Matrix, uh, the analogy I use is like the soup. So you have the ingredients, you have the water, and this the soup. And the soup, you can change their protein fiber, make the soup very thick or very uh, watery. Functions, uh, a lot of functions. So this is the most abundant tissue you find in your body, connective tissue. Like in, you don't know what to put there, you put the connective tissue. So structure support, fluid, protections, tissue integrations, uh, you have a lot of function, connective tissue. And connective tissue come from a, a stem cell, they will differentiate into different kinds of tissue, like the blood is a connective tissue. Lymphocyte, uh, that's one special kind of white blood cells. And uh, your osteoclast, that's your bone cell, bone is a connective tissue. Adipose, that's the fat, that's a connective tissue as well. So you have a lot of different kind of connective tissue. And connective tissue can be put into connective tissue proper. So this one have the loose and the dense connective tissue. They have different function. And you also have the fluid and the blood and lymph. And you also have the uh, supportive connective tissue. So like the bone and cartilage. Do you like chicken nugget? Uh, chicken nugget is called the, the, the chicken, right? But but actually it only have 40% are muscle and the other 60% connective tissue and the reason is connective tissue is the most abundant tissue you find in the body so next time you, you go to order the chicken nugget you can say I want to have the connective tissue nugget because it's most abundant tissue uh, you find in the, in the body and also in the chicken nugget okay so let's take a short break